Blossom up a cement tree. Rack. Hey guys, Keith here again with Ramshackle Homestead with Keith and Jen. And this week, I just want to touch on one more aspect of primitive fire building, especially from the 18th century standpoint. Uh, so many times we, you know, are really proficient with flint and steel. And again, the same scenario as last uh, video, our tender box again is empty. So anybody that's any count of flint and steel knows that you can throw a spark and have the best striker in the world, but without some kind of carbonized material to catch it, your chances of uh, making a fire are super low. So this is that what if situation. What if at this point I don't have a fire going and I don't have any char material to start a fire with? That's what we're going to touch on this week. Okay, so what we're going to do this time is use a bow drill out of all natural materials. And the hearth and the board are things that I've gathered here around the farm and just, you know, within a few hundred yards of this little spot. I can't stress enough, no matter how you're building a fire, whether it's with, if you're 250 years in the future from now, and somebody's invented this thing called a ferro rod, or if you're using your flint and steel, or you're using a hand drill or a bow drill, I mean, prep is the number one above all what you need to have ready is your materials so I've got a nice fire bundle nice big bundle a lot of surface area I even have gone as far as pure my punk wood and a little horseshoe horse hoof I'm sorry uh, fungus a nice black and white cat you can't have too many black and white cats and then uh, I have my fire ready to roll when I do get my tinder bundle and some smaller uh, material to add to build my tender bundle if that doesn't go as planned. So what we're going to do now is uh, use our bow drill and I'll show you a little, talk a little bit about it with our all natural material and we're going to get the fire going so we can char our cloth or our punk wood or our fungus. Okay. All right, we're going to start with our bow and this is just an elm stick I cut down on the creek. Uh, it's got a nice natural bow to it. You know, different people say different things. I like them about shoulder to wrist or shoulder to mid palm, just however it turns out. This one's got a nice little notch Y on the end. I've had this one several months, and then I've, you know, of course, cut my regular notches in. But uh, what I'm using today, this is some bark tan wang that I will just cordage twisted up. And I don't know how many fires I've started with this now, but several, and it, it's held up really well. Of course, you can do it with sinew or uh, you know, like the yucca cordage, a poplar bark cordage, uh, you know, just anything that'll make a good piece of cordage out of. But as far as natural durability, I like either a nice rawhide wang or a tanned wang, brain tan, bark tan, whatever you have, and then uh, you know, just a cordage twist into that, and it seems to be really durable and, and last the longest. This is a bigger yucca stalk uh, and a uh, yucca spindle as well. We cut it and we've only started one fire with it, a uh, class we had earlier today. And as far as a really fast ignition, this is probably the best thing we have running right now. And just like anything else, I think where a lot of people mess up is they don't prep their materials. You know, you can't just make this up and just go at it like you're playing for the Charlie Daniels band. Uh, you need to kind of, what I, would do and this will be a completely different video but I'm just going to touch on this briefly uh, you know get your hearth board hole started take the spindle you're going to use for that hearth board get it to where it mates well you know maybe even have a little smoke rolling then I'll come in here and I'll clean this back up where it's not as carbonized but basically you want a uh, I guess for lack of a better word a pencil look or maybe a, a crayon look I'll taper this up before we get going, clean it up so you don't have as much drag because you want all your drag on the business end of your spindle and your hearth board. All right, so as I was saying, all I'm gonna do is kind of scrape that carbonized material off. Give me a fresh face started up there. And then I'm gonna take this and taper it out just a little bit more. It's, it's not bad yet but it may start riding into the socket and create a little bit more drag than what I want. So I'm just gonna sharpen my pencil here a little bit. I like the way that looks. 
a lot of people like to do the single wrap and I did that for years and then a good buddy of mine on a trip this winter enlightened and made my world a better place by showing me I think it's actually called an Egyptian wrap but it's multiple wrap and you just keep wrapping around and be sure you have an even number of lashes and you don't want anything over the top of each other and uh, I found this gives me a lot more control and uh, it's a lot, it's just made my bow drill game, I, I can't even, just phenomenal compared to what it was. All right, now we got plenty of time. We're just gonna let that build. Oh, you see the wind picking it up? So we're gonna roll with that. Just a little bit of a breeze. Sometimes it's got kind of hot and it'll stick, so real gently get it in there. I also built my fire this time where I knew we had a little breeze coming in, so that's going to help to fan it up. Alright, so now we're back in business. You got a fire going, it's good and hot, uh, got our char materials gathered up, and uh, I'm just going to break off some of this fungus. Throw it in there, of course our punk wood. I got plenty of actually big chunks laying here. You guys have seen my video on uh, making char from punk tender. It's the same for the fungus. Uh, we'll let that set in there for however long it takes to cook it off. I'm going to say 20 minutes. It'll char, and then your flint and steel kit is back in business. So just that is one reason, especially for us, uh, uh, I don't even know what to call us, historical whatever. Uh, I don't like the term reenactor. But, uh, you know, get proficient with a bow drill or hand drill, some secondary form of fire, because your flint and steel kit may not always work for you. I hope you guys uh, found this video informative, and I hope you enjoyed it. And please subscribe and hit that like button for us. See you down the trail.